So my name is Megan Azad. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatrics and Child Health at the University of Manitoba. Um, a research scientist at the Children's Hospital Research Institute of Manitoba, um, and a founding member of our new uh, Developmental Origins of Chronic Diseases in Children Network, or Devotion. Um, so in that context, I study the developmental origins of chronic diseases in children. Um, primarily, these are allergy, asthma, and obesity. Um, and I'm interested in doing that from a life course perspective. So we know that these are the major chronic diseases affecting children. They also have implications much later in life. Um, and we're taking a really broad view of that. So acknowledging that genetics play a role in these conditions, um, but also recognizing that genes are not the whole answer. These conditions have really exploded in the last generation um, and our gene pool doesn't change that quickly. So looking in the environment at everything from um, you know, air pollution in the physical environment to more the socioeconomic environment, um, also looking at stress and a lot of my current research is focusing on nutrition. So both maternal nutrition during pregnancy um, and infant nutrition during early life. A big piece of that is breastfeeding. Um, so I've done some work on um, infant feeding patterns and then also looking at milk composition. So um, my own background is um, multidisciplinary, so I was trained as a biochemist and geneticist, um, but then kind of got out of the, the wet lab anyway and did training in epidemiology. So I like to bring both of those perspectives to my work, and I think that's what makes it maybe a little unique and interesting. Um, so on the one hand, looking at the feeding patterns and the associations with health trajectories and outcomes in kids, but then also going and looking at the mechanistic questions about, for example, the milk composition. Um, and so it's exciting work. A lot of this is done with um, the child study. So the Canadian Healthy Infant Longitudinal Development Study. It's a national birth cohort that we have in Canada. Um, it involves 3,500 families across the country. Uh, we recruited during pregnancy and we've been following these um, babies initially until um, they've now all reached five years of age and we certainly hope to keep following them. Um, the families have been fantastic. They've led us into their homes and their lives. They've answered um, endless questionnaires and provided samples and all of this gives us a hugely rich source of data, um, information, samples um, to look at this complex question of development of um, chronic diseases and, and, and health, just what's healthy in normal um, development. So we're learning lots and there's lots more to learn um, here at this workshop, which has been focused on the microbiota. Um, I bring to that um, some of the research that we've done on the infant gut microbiome in this child study. So we've looked at initially what shapes the infant microbiome, looking at factors um, like cesarean suction delivery versus vaginal delivery, use of antibiotics, and then breastfeeding um, is what really got me interested in that field. And then, um, yeah, I guess linking that all to what happens next. So um, it was the first question of how does the microbiome get shaped? But now as the kids get older, it's really exciting time because we can see how how all of that makes a difference, or maybe doesn't, um, to infant health as the kids get older and we monitor to see who, which children develop allergies, um, which children develop asthma. And if we can keep the study going, then we can ask questions like which kids grow out of their allergies and what's different about them and is it related to their microbiome or other factors. In my PhD, I was studying cancer biology and cell signaling, so something quite different. Um, but still with a genetic angle. And then um, when I started my postdoc research, um, I really just kind of out of luck hooked up with a group that had received a big new microbiome grant. And that was uh, back in 2010 when the microbiome was kind of just bursting onto the scene. And so um, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research had funded um, a number of teams in Canada to do microbiome research. And so I was fortunate to join up with the Symbiota research team. Um, they were studying the infant gut microbiome in the child study cohort and um, from there just really got interested in the microbiome as well as early life development. Um, and so now in my own research program, I'm still with the child study at one of the other sites and kind of taking this branch into the, the breast milk and um, breastfeeding angle. So I think in the child study, we are looking at socioeconomic factors. Actually, um, Greg Miller, um, who's now here in Chicago at Northwestern University, I believe, um, was, is part of the child study. Um, so he started uh, in the University of British Columbia, which is one of the child study sites, um, and really, I think, had an influence on how socioeconomic status is 
measured and considered in the child study. Um, so thanks to him, we have all of that data and we can now link it to what we're seeing in the microbiome um, and the health trajectories for these children. So I think there's um, a lot to come from the study from that angle. Um, initially, one of the things that I've been looking at um, from the breastfeeding angle is we see huge disparities in breastfeeding rates um, in the child study and other population-based studies. So we see, for example, that the moms uh, with lower education um, of certain ethnicities um, have lower breastfeeding rates. And so how is that being propagated and how is it affecting um, if it's causing lower uh, breastfeeding rates, then what impact does that have on the infant's microbiome and their health um, is one sort of angle that we're able to look at. Um, and, and one encouraging uh, piece of evidence that we find from the study already um, is looking at moms just in the first few days, um, whether they leave the hospital uh, exclusively breastfeeding or not. And if they do, we find that their long-term duration of breastfeeding is much longer and highly significantly longer than moms who are um, supplementing with formula just in those first two days. It makes actually a four-month difference to their total duration, which is huge and can make a big impact on the microbiome and future health of the children. Um, and so I think that this is a this tells us that those first two days are a critical window when we could probably reduce some of these disparities in breastfeeding rates if we just focus on that period and help those new moms in the first couple days um, build up their confidence and their efficacy in breastfeeding. So I think that's one uh, one angle, and I have to credit my um, PhD student Lorena Velling for that finding because she comes from the community health sciences department um, and has a real interest in health disparities and it's something I hadn't been thinking of at all in my research program um, but she sort of asked that question um, and and took that into a really nice story that's shining a light on the potential to reduce health disparities through supporting breastfeeding um, so that's one link from the research that I've been doing so far I guess one thing to add is that um, I think that longitudinal studies, so birth cohort studies, are really important for uh, health research in general, but looking at disparities too. If you don't have that longitudinal tra trajectory perspective, it's hard to know, um, first of all, what came first. So is someone's health worse um, because of their uh, disparities in early life or the inequities um, that, that they've been exposed to? Or is it the other way around? Do they have poor health? And is that causing um, lower socioeconomic status? And so having the longitudinal data is important. So for that reason, I think it's really important that we support these longitudinal studies, even though they're, of course, expensive and resource intensive, um, you know, especially once you've made the initial investment to get them going, which is a huge challenge. Um, but we're really proud of in the child study that, you know, this cohort is going. We have amazing retention out to five years of age. So we're really hoping that um, that is is appreciated by the funding community in Canada and that they continue this amazing study because there's still so much more that we have to learn from it.